the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Father's Day 2021, June 20th, 2021, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign Update. So to be absolutely clear, we are the world's first sports stock market, and every aspect of our intellectual property is registered to Crystal World Holdings, the rightful owner. Do not make any attempt whatsoever to copy this IP. If you do, we will come after you. There's not going to be any copycats that are going to, quote, fresh start the idea, unquote. You do not own the property. We own the property. We've been developing it for nearly 20 years, and we have proof, almost a terabyte of data to prove that history. So you will lose in court, guaranteed. So the Hero Club, uh, when I was part of that back in 2018, or maybe it was in early 2019, we were talking about uh, potential ideas for a a summit, basically to discuss the idea of uh, sports investing versus uh, sports betting. And it was brought up the um, the issue that has actually already shown itself. With gambling, which is uh, gam- uh, professional bettors threatening athletes, uh, you know, with physical harm if they don't win or lose or whatever, you know, point shaving, that kind of thing. Um, it was actually a potential topic for a summit uh, before uh, coronavirus basically took everything down. So I just want to bring that up. Um, that was an idea on the table and um, agreement amongst the management of C Suite and Hero Club that gambling actually th- is a threat. Uh, Sports gambling is a threat to the athletes themselves. So ransom recovery from the pipeline hack. I guess crypto isn't as uh, untraceable and irreversible as everybody's claimed as because most of the money was recovered. Doesn't look like uh, former president, and I say that over uh, with emphasis, former President Donald Trump is not a fan of Bitcoin. Um, Ace is expanding his uh, studio, physical studio, and just mentioned to me the other day that he has separate projects in the works, uh, with one with Johnny Depp and one with Jennifer Hudson. Uh, this is a spinoff from his uh, development of new virtual studio technology, uh, which he's uh, gotten some attention on, and it looks like he may even be getting some outside investment as a result of that. I always said that Ace's big jump in the movie business would be a tech innovation and it looks like that's the direction it's going the reason i'm bringing this up is as we've demonstrated in the past with um our efforts in the public domain with public relations that we're quite skilled at it and this is a uh, definitely a jump up in terms of pr possibilities in the future i'm not making any promises i'm just telling you what's going on um, we've shown in the past that we're very adept at getting press attention and once again um the way to, to get this all off the ground is to just find or create a single fundraise of physical sports or esports and then publicize that through um, our network, which is getting better all the time. There's nothing to talk about. We're not going to exercise that uh, those tools or use those tools until we have exactly what I've said, which is we need a news story. There's there that is the news story. The news story we need to get everything moving is. Uh, a, a public fundraise to actually show our, our platform doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, the idea basically from day one. We've just got, that's the keys to the kingdom for, for us. Uh, betting exchanges are nothing new. There seem to be a, a, a new one popping up all the time. If you don't believe me, go back to one called Betfair. It's been around for a very long time. Um, don't let your pride get in the way of doing the right thing. Um, those who uh, listen to this and claim they don't listen to this know exactly what I'm talking about. Stop acting acting against your own interests, okay? Learn to grow up. Put your pride down. Do the right thing. So uh, on July 4th, which is uh, gonna, exactly two weeks from today, um, we're going to be releasing the very first uh, non-fungible token. This is a test. Um, in summer 2021, Roughly, you know, in the summertime, give or take a couple of months. I, I remember this because it was before 9-11. Uh, I was actually working on the uh, engine with Ace before 9-11 happened. So it's been 20 years since uh, since that design was created in the jungles of, of Costa Rica, many, many sleepless nights. So um, non-fungible tokens, I think uh, there may be a way forward here. I, I, I'm not sure if, if it's um, tokenization of... Uh, you know, a collateral tokenization of the market. Uh, remember that we have 
We have blockchain technology um, part of our IP package. We've never had an issue with blockchain. It's been the creation of um, of of money out of thin air. So this is going to be the first test, just to see if there's any appetite for the idea. Uh, you know, if it if it makes sense, um, we're going to use a stable coin or or just a straight one to one. Uh, you know, no, none of these games with with um, the cryptos that are out there. Uh, just a stable coin as the as the pricing mechanism. So it's just going to be a dollar is a dollar. So that will be uh, released on uh, Sunday on Sunday, July fourth, which is uh, two weeks from today. There'll be uh, one more advance notice email message and and general notice put on the notice board, etc. Um, uh, just a few days ahead of time. So the uh, the model, the ASM model, does not need any changes whatsoever. Any other commentary in the public domain is misinformed lie, lies. It's really pretty amazing to me that people think they know the model better than the creator. That's uh, pretty arrogant and ridiculous. Uh, no, you don't. Okay, we built it four times. We've built the model four times. Actually, if you count War Trade, which was even before that. Um, which I've covered this before. This is not news. It's actually five times because we built the, well, six times. If you want to cover the war, war trade test model, then the brief run of the real money model, which did not work for reasons I've explained before. Um, you know, the idea of fake companies with fake news, kind of interesting, which is what it was. A news generator didn't work. So there was there was war trade test model, then war trade real time, which didn't last very long, evolved into the ASM test model in Costa Rica, then that became the real money market. So that's four. And then you have the concurrently running um, learning and real pilot market right now. Okay, so really the seventh instance of the engine is the magic number. Uh, number seven will be a completely new uh, separate one-to-one exactly as we imagined it in uh, instance of the engine and that will be the one that brings brings everything <clears throat> together brings the whole show brings everything home so I've never said that the model needed any changes I've never said that we had to have dividend reserves pumped from other sources people tried to make that claim in Costa Rica when I've rebutted it many times the issue is we need to pay the leagues not the other way around there is no need to change the model. It does not need external funding sources. That is all a lie. That is all an absolute lie from people who have no idea what they're talking about. All we need is the ability to pay the leagues, and we need other partners. That, that's pay the leagues, and when that structure has been laid down for a long time, and the other partnerships that we would have are about visibility. So it's just you know advertising deals, basically the kind of stuff we did in Costa Rica, putting up banners at the soccer games and that sort of stuff. It's that kind of partnership that just gets exposure to increase the trading volume. That's all that is. I've never said anything contrary to any of this. It is a complete lie from the pit of hell, anybody who says otherwise. The Las Vegas Sands is in a big, nasty lawsuit. Um, look it up for yourself. So we, uh, we've done futures before. In fact, we did it in the Costa Rican days. Remember the Back to the Futures De uh, DeLorean giveaway, the first one? That was based on the futures product. So anybody who tries to claim that they're creating sports futures for the first time is full of crap. Um, we've done it. We did it more than a decade ago, closer to 15 years ago. So uh, the NFT market is still, you know, it's it's very mysterious to me how this. I, I've actually spent quite a bit of time looking at it. Sotheby's just had an auction and sold one for twelve million dollars. I just something about this I don't understand. Um, I've even looked at some of the ones that are selling in the thousands or you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars a piece and thousands of dollars a piece and. It I, maybe it's because uh, the idea of a digital asset you know, like characters in, in real role-playing games and that sort of thing has become a real thing. Maybe that's why people accept this. But the fact that somebody would pay $12 million for a um, for a digital art piece, uh, you know, which is just a bunch of bits and bytes, um, it's kind of, it, it blows my mind. But nonetheless, the market is still pretty frothy there. Um, our market test is, is just more about seeing if the idea makes sense to to the, you know, to the people looking at it. Um, 
ASM and the concept of sports performance investing is not building a website. It is not taking uh, sports gambling, which is a known industry that's been around for a very long time and moving it on shore. That's a false equivalency. It's not fair to show the timelines side by side and say, well, what about why is this taking so long? If you want a, a more accurate comparison, look at the tablet, um, the computer tablet market and the development of that, which starts really well it starts a very long time ago if you go back to the real beginnings but if you want to talk about the modern age it's in the early 90s that's a more accurate comparison we're not just creating a website or a copy of something it's in a, a completely new idea and you know do do your history work on anything like that these these things are very very hard to pull off um that's just the bottom line so um you know it, it making any kind of comparison to gambling is is, um, is false equivalency. Uh, freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences. Those of you who know need to know what I'm talking about will know exactly what that means. Freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences. 267 mass shootings so far this year. Maybe it's now 270 or so. This was actually last week. I think we've had a half dozen more. It's probably closer to. 275. Uh, we have a real problem here, folks. Um, California is looking at bailing out the legal pot, um, marijuana, you know, cannabis market, pot market. Uh, here, the point of this mentioning this is it is a comparison to the black market competing with the legal market. This is exactly the issue that is going to plague the um, the gambling business, and and the Wire Act creates a trap. So. The 1961 Wire Act, which everybody is trying to pretend like it doesn't exist when it's actually the teethiest law of them all, if you if you do not enforce it, which they're not at the present time because they're double-minded and and hypocritical, uh, is the, what you have is you you let the black market grow. When I was in Costa Rica, the only law that was ever discussed was the Wire Act, not PASPA. I, I, I maybe twice I ever heard that come up in a conversation. I didn't even know what it was, but everybody knew the 1961 Wire Act. So if you enforce the Wire Act, okay, which they're not doing, then you have to you have to take down not only the black market, which they can do anytime they want, but you also have to take down the onshore market because every single online sports book. Or, or daily fantasy site at this moment in time in this country is breaking the Wire Act thousands of times a minute, okay? So if you don't want to enforce the Wire Act, then the offshore market grows. If you repeal the Wire Act, the offshore market is going to grow even more because right now it acts as a bit of a, of a stick because it's been used for RICO cases, it's been used to throw people in jail, you can look at the Costa Rican books. I don't remember right now the name of the cases, but there was a couple very famous cases where um, the the CEOs of these uh, Costa Rican books were arrested, or one particular one. And in fact, when I first went to Washington D.C. Uh, the first time from Costa Rica and sat down with the with um, the law firm Austin and Bird, one of the guys that had just joined there was from was a was the former head of international law enforcement at the Justice Department. Uh, his name was, um, I think it was Weiner, Jonathan Weiner. I'm pretty sure that's right. And before we even got underway, he asked me why I wasn't be afraid of being arrested on the spot. That was my introduction to Washington D.C. So why did he say that? Because the miss, you know, the understandable thought that we were just a sports book operating from Costa Rica, and the Wire Act being used actually not too many years before that to um, arrest and seize the assets of a, um, of a Costa Rican sports book CEO. So uh, this is not something you're gonna they're going to find their way out of. So if they, again, to recap, if they do not enforce the Wire Act, which they're not doing, okay, then the offshore market continues to grow and threaten the uh, onshore market because of better prices, no taxes, no reporting, no regulation, okay, which is what gamblers like. That's their ethos, okay? They don't like government. So that's, that's the issue. If you repeal the Wire Act, okay, if you repeal it, then the, it's going to be a complete Disney. It's, it's going to explode the black market even more, okay, 
because right now there is some attenuation of that market because of the threat of enforcement at any time. It's it can be it's just like the uh, the marijuana's marijuana is still illegal at the federal level. The federal government can at any time shut anybody down they want. Okay. So that that stick is always hanging over people's heads, and sometimes they do. I mean, there you can see the history of raids and things. So if they leave it status quo, they don't enforce it. They're going to have a market problem. Not to mention the hypocrisy of of pretending a sixty year old settled law is not the law, which makes me call the whole system a bunch of bullshit. You either, if you're not going to respect sixty year old super precedent, then don't talk to me about the law. Okay, I don't want to hear about it because it's a joke. Okay, this is not some. Uh, decision from a, a, a district court last week. This is 60-year-old settled anti-corruption law, okay? If you're not going to enforce that, then it's all a joke. It's all a con. It's all a, it's, it's just a bunch of lawyers lying to, to themselves and to us and to the courts. That's all it is, okay? So enforce the Wire Act, shut everybody down, okay? Because you can't, you can't have it both ways. You shut the offshore guys down and you shut the onshore guys down. If you want to repeal it, Go ahead and repeal it and watch the offshore market absolutely explode even bigger than it is now, and you're still not going to capture the market here for the reasons I stated earlier about regulation and the lack of desire to have government disclosures and all that on your wagers, okay? So there's a trap here, okay? There's no way out of it. It's going to have to be dealt with or just take the entire legal system and throw it in the, in, in the fucking fireplace because it's all garbage, okay? It's all a bunch of lies. All right, so um, DraftKings has got themselves in a bit of a pickle here. Uh, Do not underestimate the the Hindenburg short report. Uh, I know they're short, but that's that's the market. You can publish and you can short, okay? This is legal. Insiders have been selling like crazy, okay? So, uh, you know, they got theirs, right? DraftKings insiders got theirs. And the the key point in this story is that DraftKings is hiding gray market I don't know about black market if they're that stupid, if they're actually still servicing black markets and, and handling. They probably are. Um, you know, I, I, it would be incredibly stupid to do that, but, but maybe they are. But, the fa- but their defense, and I've already seen it start to develop, is that gray market is okay. So once again, this is a, quote, public company through a shortcut called a SPAC, which these things are constantly having – scandals because it doesn't go through due diligence. It doesn't go through even the stuff we had to go through and are going through. Okay. So it's a shortcut and uh, it's regulated by the federal government, which means that you cannot break federal law. Okay. It's, I mean, even on simple things like grants and requests and things that I filled out, anytime that there's federal funds involved, you cannot break federal law. That's the reason, as I've said in prior podcasts, that it asked whether you were involved, whether the applicant was involved in the marijuana business, in the gambling business, or in the pornography business, because all three of those remain illegal at the federal level. Okay, that's the reason for the question. They don't put questions on there that don't have a specific point of law fact. Okay, so DraftKings. At minimum is gray market. Okay, so they're going to try to claim that that legal uncertainty is okay. I'm betting that there's black market operations in there, which means that they're flat up subjected to all sorts of of legal threats. But the mere fact that it's mentioned that gray market is okay is trying to say that it's okay that even though there's not a specific legality, that it'll just slide. That's <laughs> that. Look, that cannot be. Either we have laws or we don't have laws. I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. Either we have laws or we don't have laws. As far as ASM's profitability, unlike Scam DraftKings and lots of others, the exchange will be profitable from the very first day that it trades. Okay? From the very first day. When we do a, a legitimate fundraise, when we find or create that fundraise and we put it out, ASM is going to show a profit from the very first day of operation under the the one-to-one formal structure that we've had in mind pretty much from the beginning. And it's going to accelerate very fast because when when teams realize that or leagues realize that, that they can raise non-recourse capital through this method, they're going to do it, okay? So once again, it goes back to 
We need a single example, and then we need to publicize that example. And we have the tools. We've shown we, we were able to do it. We've done it before. We've done it before in Costa Rica. We had a lot of press down there, and we've done it in the States. So we know how to do it. We know where to go. We have press contacts. We are getting more contacts, but we need the actual news piece, and that is the league itself. So if you are someone who has a league, wants to create a league, knows someone, et cetera, et cetera, please see the show notes. There's a link down there to submit your league idea for vetting or your league proposition for vetting. Okay, so um, the video asked me anything, which was trumped up to be some kind of big thing that, you know, like there were thousands or hundreds of people, not thousands because we don't have that many stockholders. Uh, there were hundreds of people that were angry, it turned out to be a lie, and it was like 12, 13 people that signed up. I put in the um, on the notice board that I'd answer questions anyway, which I have done and I will continue to do, provided they're not the same questions. Do not ask me the same questions over and over again, okay? I answer it. I'm only going to answer it one time. Um, okay, so uh, the investor lawsuits are coming against DraftKings fast and hard, so you're going to see that uh, start to roll out. Um, next week's probably going to be – every time I check the news, there's another law firm – Fishing. They're not going to do this if there's not something there. They're not. Not this many. I've seen half dozen or so law firms already uh, go fishing for people who lost money. If you look at the stock price of DraftKings over the last six months, it's just gone down. And while it's been going down, the insiders have cashed out hundreds of millions of dollars. So good luck explaining that to a court. Um, that doesn't look very good. Um, the SPAC, if you want a comparison of another nightmare, look at Lordstown Motors, another SPAC with excessive payrolls to the insiders and the CEOs, exactly the same thing DraftKings is doing. So, uh, you know, that's your pattern, okay? This is just a cash-out job, sucker the public, leave them holding the bag. Okay, so, um, you know, the, this whole gray market, black market thing yeah, it, that's crazy with DraftKings. You know, the SEC needs to do their damn job. Uh, this, this, They should have never given them the, the green light in the first place. There's no way in the world that they're compliant with the Wire Act. It's absolutely impossible. It is absolutely 100% impossible. So uh, I don't know how that got passed. Um, some slick lizard tail, you know, lizard tongue lawyer job, I guess, or bribing a judge or something. Something is wrong here, okay? Because the Wire Act is an overarching law that covers the entire banking system and you you can't transmit the money you can't transmit information about the bets you cannot transmit the bets you cannot do it okay wired or wireless cannot do it that law is still there it was restated earlier this year by a district court okay or an appeals court i believe be appeals court excuse me forget which one I think seventh circuit okay so um once again the timeline for ASM is the tablet market not bringing gambling onshore, okay? They've been drooling over getting this money onshore since Ace and I were in Costa Rica, okay, for 20 years. They're not creating anything new. They're just trying to take the money from the other guys. That's it, okay? Does not count. Um, and, you know, it's a trap, Either they're going to uh, either we either we're a lawless society, which is looking more and more the case every day, or we have laws. You cannot have it both ways. It's a one or it's a zero. Okay, if you're going to enforce the Wire Act, then enforce the Wire Act and stop pretending like it's not there. Okay, stop pretending it's not there. It's sixty year old settled law. Okay, either enforce it, repeal it. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and repeal it and watch the offshore market absolutely mushroom, I mean, into a monster way beyond. And then you're still not going to get the money here because they're still going to beat you on price. They're still going to beat you on regulation or the lack thereof, and they're going to beat you on no disclosure to government agencies. Okay? So enforce, repeal, or don't enforce. If you're not going to enforce, then let's just call the whole legal system what it is, a cocked-up lie. Okay? That's what it is. But it cannot be all of these things, okay? Cannot be all of these things. So once again, final point, point forward for us. We need one, doesn't even have to be huge, one single example of a formal fundraise for a sports or esports league 
We have every other tool in our toolkit to make this a public story, a big story, and complete this mission of nearly 20 years of blood, sweat, and tears. So rather than sitting on your hands or worse, trying to tear apart something that is against your very own interest, that's the job to do. That's the job to do. I step away. Alper takes over. He's got all the right credentials. He's been with this thing pretty much almost since the very beginning. And if you want to be free of me, some of you, would, for whatever reason, listen, that's, let me explain something. That's never going to happen because I'm the architect of the design. But if you want somebody else in charge of the corporation, this is the way it happens. Okay? So happy Father's Day, and I'll speak with you again next time. Bye now.